and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco 2. Today, we have got two games for you. Crystal Palace coming up in the league. And then we've had to change the schedule slightly because we are in the FA Cup fifth round against Crew Alexandra. Before we get into the results from in between episodes, we've made two signings over the January transfer window, which you need to know about, obviously, because they're quite important players to the side. So if we jump into the, the transfer history, you can see here we signed two players, both on loan. The first, Jamie Young from Derby. He's a centre-back, a centre-back that we really needed. We almost had two coming on loan right at the start of the season, but they went to other clubs in the end, and we were a bit left, left a bit stuck then in the end, which was a bit annoying. But Jamie Young has come in to the side. Three and a half star current ability and five star potential. Looks pretty decent. Has played uh, in League One and League Two before. Is now making a step up to the Championship, and I think is going to be a decent player for us. The other player coming in is Jason Rendell from Brighton. He's coming in on loan to play on the left wing, which I think is a position that we really needed to strengthen. We had Turiak there, but he's not a natural left winger this guy Jason Rendell is four star current ability and five star potential which is really really good for us has been at Lincoln City before as well so knows the city very well but of course Lincoln City are in league one we're in the championship he's decided to step up a level for this season or the second half of this season at least after making three substitute appearances at Brighton in the Premier League so I think he's going to be a very very good player for us however he is injured. He's out for another three weeks or so with a groin strain. So we won't see him in today's episode, unfortunately. So hopefully both of those new players coming in are really going to bolster the side this season for the second half of our campaign, which is going to be really, really good. We've had a pretty decent time in between episodes as well. If we look at the what happened last time, obviously Southampton and Brentford last episode, which was a bit unfortunate. But since then, we've had some really positive results, starting off with Rochdale in the FA Cup third round. A 2-0 win there, which was really, really good stuff to take into the fourth round. We then had a couple of championship games in between, a 1-1 draw with Reading, a 1-1 draw with QPR, and then a 1-0 win against Bristol City, which was pretty good. Gary Langley scored a couple goals in those games, uh, and Alan Bell got the other one in the Reading game. So that was pretty good. We then came up against MK Dons and we just about managed to secure a draw there. Ibrahim Donker scoring in the 91st minute to make sure that we got a replay against MK Dons. Otherwise, they would have gone through and they're in the league below us. So that would have been a bit of a poor result for us. We then had a Portsmouth in the league after that. Lee Phillips scoring the goal there to make it 1-0. That's his first goal for a while, to be fair. So we're very pleased to see him get on the score sheet against Portsmouth. He picked up the three points there. We then had MK Dons at our place and Lee Phillips scored both goals in that game to make sure we went through to the fifth round, which we've been very lucky to be drawn against Crew Alexandra, who are also in League One. So we've got a great chance of getting to the sixth round without having to play teams better than us, which is a really, really good run of fixtures. After the win to MK Dons, we then played against Millwall, which was a pretty decent result. Uh, another goal for Lee Phillip there, a penalty scoring that goal there to make sure we picked up another three points. So I was very pleased with that. And then last time out, we finally lost this time 2-0 to Leeds United. And it was probably because before that Leeds United game, in 11 days, we had four games. So we've got some very tired players, lots of players missing the Crystal Palace game today because they're just way too tired. And I want to rest them as well for the crew Alexandra game. So... This is the lineup for today's game against Crew, and it's a bit of a, 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 mismatch, a mishmash of, of players at the moment. We've got McClement in goal, as per usual, but the back line of Turiak Thomas, the new chap Young, and Emmanuel Prince is a bit of a bit of a mashup, really, of defenders. We've got Hunter in the CDM position as well, which isn't fantastic. Goff and Porter make up the missing midfield links as Bell and Burton are both pretty tired from recent games. Bell, by the way, is a player I really wanted to get back next season. However, he is joining New England Revolution in summer. He has been transferred there after they had a bid accepted for him. So unfortunately, Alan Bell, I don't think we're going to see him again after this season, which is a massive shame because he's been our best player this season. Butler's going to start on the right-hand side because Langley is very tired. Phillip starts on the left-hand side because our new left-winger, Randall, is injured and Turiak's playing at left-back because... Uh, where is he? Simpson's very tired. So that's why we've got some unusual attacking midfielders. And then Adam Pardo is going to be leading the line for us today because uh, where is he? Of course, Phillips on the left wing, of course. So that's why he's playing there. So a bit of a different one today. I don't think we're going to beat Crystal Palace with this lineup, but we've had to switch it up. Otherwise, we're just going to be playing with players that are too tired and we won't win that game either. So we've got a better chance to win here today with players who are fitter and more up for it in terms of condition. And hopefully our good players we are back in time for the Crew Alexandra game and win that one. So it's looking pretty positive, I think. Right, kickoff is upon us, and it was upon us 11 minutes ago. And Crystal Palace have a corner, which we've just about cleared, to be fair, as Crystal Palace look to come forward once again. 
If you remember, actually, back to Football Manager 2017 days, which is a long time ago now, a long time ago, uh, I was the manager of Crystal Palace for a little while in a journeyman save that we did, um, which was pretty decent, to be fair, until we moved on to Roma after then. But we were in the Premier League with Crystal Palace. I think we got into the Europa League a few times, if I remember rightly. I don't think we ever won it or anything like that. But uh, they were a stepping stone on the way to Roma, where we eventually won the Champions League with Roma, which was pretty good, with Paul Pogba in the side, if I remember as well, which is also a bit of a coup to secure him. But Crystal Palace have a, have a small place in my heart in terms of football manager, but in real life, I don't really care for them at all. But it is pretty mental how we are Lincoln United and we are in the same division as Crystal Palace. Like, that is... Men in fact, we're above them on the table. We are 10th, Crystal Palace are 11th. That just shows how crazy it is. I don't think I actually showed you the table, did I? We are, we are, we're 10th in the table. There we go. We're actually only four points off the playoffs, as things stand, which is even more mental, to be fair. And we're only three points off that 50 points total that we need for safety, really. Crystal Palace have just had a man sent off as well. So this could be very good for us as we go into the second half. This could make a big difference. If we go on to a bit more of an attacking stance there and we say get creative just for half time. Young puts the ball in, who's our new centre-back. I'm not quite sure why he's on set pieces, but he's the one doing it at least. He puts the cross in, it's cleared just about, but Goff on the edge of the area, back to Thomas. Thomas into Turiak, and Turiak plays it back to Thomas, who just about gets it forward, and it sort of comes back to us in the end as Goff now on the ball. If we can grab a goal before half time, that would be absolutely incredible. As Turiak plays it into Philip. Philip coming forward into Pardo, into Butler, who puts it wide. That deserved a goal at the end of it, but it wasn't to be. And that's the first half. Also fantastic stuff. We've got a sellout here today against Crystal Palace and actually only 700 Crystal Palace fans which means there's at least 4,000 of our own fans here today, which I think is mental. That's really, really good stuff for us. I think the stadium expansion capacity for the Lincoln United Stadium is about 10,000. However, in the Premier League, if we ever get there, I think the minimum requirements are 12,500, which does mean if we get to the Premier League, we'll have to have a brand new stadium. And as we reach 70 minutes, not scored a goal yet. Let's demand more, go very attacking. Maybe make a change or two out there just to see if we can spice things up a little bit. Maybe bring Mark Mason on for Pardo. He's not played particularly well. Mason can have a go scoring some goals for us. Stan Porter has not played particularly well either. So I reckon we bring Bell on for the final 10 minutes or so. Even though he's very tired, I think it's worth bringing on his quality at least for the final 15 minutes. To see if we can actually score a goal against 10-man Crystal Palace. And if we do, it'll be wonderful. At the same time though, I will take a draw against Palace because... Well, it's, it's Crystal Palace, isn't it? As Lee Phillips picked up an injury. Now, that is a worry. A big worry because he's our best striker. He's got 14 goals so far this season. If he's out for a long time, that could really jeopardise any chance we've got, actually, of trying to get to the playoffs. Because we're only four points off it, but we need his goals to get there. And it's not like we're expected to be there at all. But considering we're only four points away, we may as well try and push for it and see what we can do. Can we score a goal right at the death here? Bell on the ball, edge of the area. Oh, we've, they've just about cleared it and that's full time. We've drawn nil nil. We've kept a clean sheet at least. I'm a bit disappointed we didn't score against 10 man Palace, but there we go. I should also say sorry, no video yesterday on, on Monday. Uh, it's Tuesday today, obviously. That's when you're watching this. There was no video yesterday because I was so busy over the weekend, had no time to play any football manager let alone record a video. Philip's out for five to six weeks. That's going to be an issue for us. It does mean, though, that Pardo has now got his chance to show his worth and score some goals for us. As I was saying, though, over the weekend, I was just really busy with other things. Didn't have any chance to play. So Monday, which is today, I'm having to play all these games, catch up and then record and then edit it for Tuesday. So I hope you can forgive me, but... That's the situation. It's just one of those things, I suppose. We do only have a couple of days off, though, until the Crew game, which is vital. We need to get a good result against Crew because FA Cup, there's a lot of money in that, a lot of reputation. In, in the sixth round, we could have another Tottenham away. And if that's the case, another Tottenham away, that's another million and a half pounds in the bank. If we play like we did against Palace, I'm confident we'll get the win. And theoretically, we should do because we've got our better players coming back into the lineup for the crew game. So really, we should walk all over them. But I did say that about MK Dons and then we have to go to the replay against them. So it's weighing things up a little bit as Langley is now injured for only three days, but he might end up missing the crew game because of that, or at least be on the subspench for the crew game. So then we need to get some players 
back into this lineup. So uh, Carl Smith's going to come in for Young, who is obviously cup tied. For, well, obviously, he was cup tied because he was at somewhere else apparently at the first half of the season, or has played a cup game at least. So he can't play. Dong is going to come back in for Hunter as well. Tyriac's going to move up to swap with the injured Philip, which means that Simpson comes back in at left back. Uh, Langley, how is he looking? A little tired. We'll bring him on the bench for Young at least. And then we'll start with Butler, but maybe swap them over in a bit. Phillips obviously got to come off as well because he's looking injured out there. So he can't play. Pardo will stay up front. Ross Burton will come on the bench, but he'll swap for Goff. And then Porter will swap for Bell. Are we looking okay in terms of defenders on the bench? Hunter's there. We should probably swap Porter and Goff. Take Porter off for... Maybe Wayne Higgins, because he's about the only fit person, actually, who's not on the bench already. So, there we go. That's what we'll do. This lineup should be enough to beat Crew. Fingers crossed it is, because I really want to get to the sixth round of the FA Cup. Right, then, kickoff is upon us today. We're at home as well, which is fine by me, because Crew, I don't think, have a particularly big stadium. So, it's not like we're missing out on massive revenue if we were at home against Manchester United, rather than being away to Manchester United, where we could have millions coming in from gate receipts and things like that but hopefully we'll get there in the sixth round sorry as it looks like we're going to come forward with the first highlight of the game pretty early on as Carl Smith puts the ball forward it's headed up only as far as Butler but his ball his, his control wasn't particularly good but again he's won the ball back and Prince can play it back to Carl Smith now as we slowly try to come forward Carl Smith back on the ball now and into Thomas who actually we probably should have taken off the pitch for like Hunter or someone actually and that's why, because he's lost the ball there and Crew have got the opening goal of the game. Now that, oh, was that a mistake? I, sh I meant to take him off the pitch, but I forgot. But he's been solid all season when he has played. It's just one of those incidents that he just hasn't got. Why is that not a foul? Why was that not a foul, referee? They've bundled him to the floor. McClellan can't make the save. And that really, that should be a free kick for us. Plenty of time to get back into the game, though, as we are in the sixth minute now. And if we can grab an equaliser straight away, that would be fantastic as Butler hits the post. We've come close, but it's not close enough. Since that goal, then, there's oh, we, we, there's not been many chances on highlights, at least. So we need to start playing football, boys. We need to be grabbing some goals. I'm going to shout demand more for the final 15 minutes, 10 minutes or so of this first half. But if we can grab a goal before the half-time whistle, I'll be over the moon. But... I mean, I can't believe we're losing to Crew at the moment. And we had, we had a tough time against MK Dons in the fourth round. This is the best chance we've got of getting to a quarter-final of the FA Cup, that is. A sixth round is a quarter-final. We've had a fantastic run where we've not had to play anyone difficult, and yet we are being outplayed at the moment by Crew. And we were very much outplayed by MK Dons in the fourth round as well. So it's just we seem to slip up against teams in divisions below us because we lost to Wrexham as well. In the, in the Carabao Cup, and that was, they're in League Two, so we have an issue. At least we've got another sellout here today. That's important, another sellout, that's really good. What we do need to do, though, is go to very attacking, and we need to go show some passion, because I don't understand why we're not scoring goals at the moment. Simpson with a free kick then. He's putting it in, and it's headed just wide by Peter Butler. P Butler's had a few good chances, to be fair, today, but he's failed to capitalise on any of them, and I think we need to take Donker off the pitch. Now, do we bring Monk on? I think we bring Mason on, actually. Let's, let's just go for it. Let's bring Mark Mason on as an advanced forward on attack. Pardo can come down as more of a pressing forward on support. Let's try that out. If it doesn't work out, we'll take Pardo off. We'll bring Monk on in that attacking midfielder position. But we need to grab a goal from somewhere in today's game. Push forward out there. Simpson into Burton. Oh, their man's been sent off now. So that's good for us. Their man's been sent off. We've got 20 minutes to get into this game now 20 minutes to grab a goal and yet it doesn't look like we're going to do it our crew actually going to beat us we played so well against crystal palace and failed to get the win today we're playing well well enough against crew ordinarily we should be winning this demand more who else can we bring on the pitch pardo isn't doing nothing we've got mason there let's bring tyler monk on as an attacking midfielder. No, Trequatista on attack. Gary Langley, come on for Butler. This is what we've got to do now. Five minutes to go. We need two goals, ideally. But I don't think we're even going to get one of them. We have outplayed crew here today in terms of the stats. 62% possession, 16 shots. And yet, 
unless we can score from this corner right now, which I don't think we're going to do as it's cleared. I can't believe I'm going to say it, but it's Crew who are going to be going to the FA Cup sixth round. And we've lost to the team from a division below us. And it's really not very good. I can't... And it's all because they scored a goal that shouldn't have been a goal. That should have been a free kick for us. I don't understand how the referee didn't blow for a free kick. There were two men on him, bundling him to the ground, and then they go and score. In my eyes, that is a free kick for us. I feel really cheated by the game engine there. And we've lost it. You see, ordinarily, I wouldn't actually mind losing a cup game because I, I usually like to focus on the league. But when you consider that that was the fifth round and we're playing against a team from a division below us, I just can't believe it. I'm so cross about that. At least we've set new gate receipt records. 130k we made from that game. So there's a positive in it somewhere at least. But that's, that's about the only one. So after that disappointment, there's not long to go this season now. Actually, not long at all to go. Uh, next episode is actually going to be pretty quick. I think we'll go for Huddersfield and Charlton, the grounds that we've played Peterborough and Forest already in episodes this season. So Huddersfield and Charlton on Thursday, Swansea and Hull on Friday, and potentially if we're in the playoffs, by the, because it's still very possible for us to get playoffs, that'll be at the weekend. But for now, as things stand outside the playoffs, we've only got two more games left. We've only got two more episodes left this season. So it's gone pretty quick, but it's been a good season for us. So thank you very much for watching today's episode. If you've enjoyed it, please do drop a like on the video for me and subscribe to the channel if you are new around here. And I'll see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.